hurts. And then just gonna move it up a little bit. All right, we're live. I'm making adjustments as we go along live. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Uh, welcome back. Bane and Tony here with the Dolphin Biz Talk Show, hashtag uh, Dolphin Biz. And we have a guest with us. Can you introduce yourself real quick? I'm Cam Metcalf. I'm an attorney CPA here in Dothan. Uh, work with SB Metcalf and SB, as well as Metcalf and Company CPAs. So we, we promised uh, to bring you guys more guests, more speakers, <coughs> more people that know more stuff that we definitely have no idea, especially when it comes to law stuff. Can you see his, his certificates in the yeah. shop? As you know, he's probably, he knows what he's talking about. So, um, and I said, there's one of the oldest law firms in Dothan. We've been here, the firm, Firm's been here 30 years plus. Fantastic. Um, we're going to go to today's topic, as you're in, part of the title is business law. And one of the important things that I definitely learned when I was starting out, still starting out, not that old of a business, is how to properly get labeled, the process of doing that, and the different types of, what are they called, the LLC S Corps labels? Entities, legal entities. There we go. See, I don't even know the right. Legal entities <laughs> are important. They're, they're definitely important. If, you are a small business and you don't have one of these into I definitely recommend pay attention to the video and definitely uh, at least reach out to Cam. Uh, does Kaz do this too? Yes. Cam or Kaz, uh, Kaz SB, uh, and the Metcalf and Com uh, SB Metcalf and, and SB law firm. Uh, before we do this, Bane, any announcements on your side? Uh, I'm announcement free this week. Really? <laughs> but I mean, I got. Do you uh, want to mention the stroll? The yeah, okay, so um, on an, another kind of business that I got going on is called the Wiregrass Wedding Collective. Uh, so we're going to be planning an event on October 15th. It's going to be from 4 to 8 p.m. And it's going to be a little bit um, less traditional bridal show that you see normally. It's going to be just uh, spread throughout the downtown streets. Uh, the two different green space parks that we have. So there'll be some vendors set up there, lots of different activities, giveaways and things like that. So this week we're kind of tightening up some of the details and we'll start promoting it more in the next couple of weeks. But um, also like from our historic downtown business association meeting that we had yesterday too, right. um, that there's gonna be a collective effort for uh, Halloween day. Uh, there's gonna be just a bunch of different businesses mm -hmm. and, and such that are gonna be doing a lot of stuff on um, Halloween. So uh, some cool stuff happening downtown that you can be part of uh, outside of that. I got a big business trip coming up next week, so I'm looking yeah, forward to that. Yeah, the next couple weeks be interesting yeah. with talk show. <laughs> <laughs> so, so as far as the next couple weeks, it's going to be a little bit more play by ear as far as the time of when we go live, because the two days, both Wednesdays are travel days for me. So it's going to be one of those, like, all right, so I got like 15 minutes, let's go live real quick and um, uh, take care of it remotely next time. Um, you might still have someone with you on location, but we'll see if, if that path happens, but I'll have to be remote for that. But looking forward to that trip. Um, as usual, these shows, you can catch them on YouTube. Um, we are still working on putting in podcast form as well. And as usual, I still have a $20 giveaway that no one has claimed yet. So <laughs> maybe someone watching this will claim 20 bucks a day. But hopefully they're not kicking down cans the front door. We are in his office, so please be considerate. I was yeah. wondering if I could claim it. But <laughs> like... If you're on the show, you can't claim it. But <laughs> Anyways, uh, without further ado, uh, we're going to turn it over to Cam. Like, if you want to, Cam, I mean, you could, you could talk about how you work with me and the type of S-Corps and what, uh, whatever you can, I guess, say. <laughs> I'm sure there might be some legal restrictions, well, but go for it, Cam. One, one of the things I enjoy about my job is I get to help people that have a dream of starting their own business. I kind of help them put that in motion, okay? Um, generally when I'm, somebody's wanting to start a new business, I, I talk to them or counsel them about the different forms of entities that are available. And we talk about, do they want to limit their liability exposure? And of course, we also talk about uh, the various tax aspects, depending on the type of business you set up you have. Most new companies now like to operate as limited liability companies, LLCs. And we help folks uh, set up their LLCs and then uh, basically go from the setting up the legal side as well as the accounting side because we will then, we'll help them do their articles of organization and their operating agreement, reserve their name, get a tax ID number with the IRS, and then basically 
instruct or counsel about you know setting up their books. Uh, a lot of people set up new companies and they don't think about the accounting side. They, you know, we get taxed on everything nowadays, <laughs> and yeah. uh, uh, so you want to make sure you, when you're starting a new business, you set up those books in such a way to make sure you have a good um, trail for accounting purposes so that you can report on your taxes. Um, going through the different types when we're talking with folks, a lot of people, before they form an LLC, they'll just be a sole proprietorship. They'll just operate as a DBA, doing business as whatever their name is, and they'll get out there and get their license and start, start their business, okay? Uh, those are generally taxed on Schedule C of their 1040. And one of the things a lot of people don't understand is that on a tax return, you don't pay just income tax, you have to pay self-employment tax on any self-employment earnings, which is basically Social Security. And so that is a 15.3% rate just on that, that adds up to your tax burden. And so a lot of times we structure or counsel folks on setting up a different structure that might save on those taxes. Uh, limited liability company is like a corporation except it's uh, can basically it's like a combination where you can have multiple members and you can choose to be taxed like a partnership or like a corporation and uh, it limits liability if you're having employees or you are in some kind of business that carries risk you don't want to have something happen uh, that could impose personal liability against you but as the owner mm -hmm. and put your personal assets at risk. So you form a limited liability company, which uh, basically can help shelter personal assets. Obviously, you don't want to risk your personal home when you're setting up this new business if you can find a way to keep from risking other assets. So using a limited liability company or corporation uh, limits liability. Corporations are generally, uh, in the past, have been the preferred vehicle, but over the last, I'd say, last dozen years, LLCs have become more prevalent because they're easier to form and to, and to dissolve than corporations are. Um, partnerships, we do see a number of folks do partnerships, but we recommend that if you're gonna be in partnership with somebody, you do it through a limited liability company because Otherwise, a partner can basically uh, make, can incur a debt that makes both partners liable or, or the, any number of partners in the, the firm. So once again, you want to limit that exposure to, uh, to just assets of the LLC. Mm. As you can tell, there's a little bit involved in this. And so what we normally do is sit down with somebody and we look at all the you know, how many employees are you going to have? Are you going to have independent contractors? Or, you know, how, how are you, how, what exposures do you have so that we can help look at potentially limiting those exposures? This is the, the business side of running a business, you can safely say. Because I know, I know for one, when I uh, can, for those of you watching, he is uh, my lawyer and he also is my CPA as well, on top of that. And we'll probably have to do get hold of your son and do a CPA episode as well, because that's, they're different. They're, you can't, well, you do both, but they're still, you gotta wear two different hats when you're doing them. We do, we, we have certain aspects that deal strictly with what we would say is the legal side, and then we have aspects that deal with the tax side or the tax law side, and we do distinguish between the different things we do, but it's still dealing all in all with mm -hmm. people's finances right. and looking at trying to help folks we try to help people set up their business and run their business and account for everything and keep more of what they make. You know, try to try to limit the tax burden and any other exposures that are out there to try to let you obviously build your business and keep more of what you make rather than paying Uncle Sam. That's true. I, I know for for a fact, I've dealt with my one of my taxes, my business. Not since I started. I should have when I started because I. When I met Ken, I, yeah, I had no idea what I, was, what I was doing. I had some papers, I don't remember why, and I just, you can't be like, no, this is wrong. <laughs> like, we need to fix this. <laughs> 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 
And uh, now a Pathfinder's Market is an LLC. And one of the things that you mentioned when I, when I became an LLC was use the labeling. Put LLC on the business cards, on your stuff. Yes, you want to distinguish everything to be your entity so that it looks like it is a separate legal entity. So we operate our accounting firm as an LLC. So Metcalf and Company LLC, we put the name with the LLC on our business cards, on our letterhead, on our invoices and statements. All our, we basically set up our business expenses or our business accounts through the LLC. So the phone lines are through the LLC. We, we buy our supplies and everything using an LLC credit card or open account, but you get the idea. Yeah. You want to, you want the public or whoever you're dealing with to know that you're operating as an LLC, so that that helps from a legal side to re keep anybody from trying to say it was just you being a sole proprietor. Are you? Are you? What's ever being created? We're LLC. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, apart from all that kind of stuff, like before I lose my thought about it, it's like. Even on my side of stuff, like we've had to consult lawyers just like with contracts and things like that. Um, like for every project that we do, we have the client sign a contract. So that way we're protected. Everybody knows what is expected. And then especially like even with the COVID related stuff, like we've had to adjust to some of our verbiage. So, so that way as a company, we're protected um, that somebody can't come after us for this and that reason or whatever. Um, you have all kinds of clauses in there and stuff like that. So that way you protect not only the company, but also the client. So like even at, like I know there's a ton of photographers in the Dothan area. Um, it's wise to consult a lawyer about like what kind of contracts that you have with your clients and stuff. It's like each project needs a, someone to write off on it instead of just like, yeah, we'll do this for such an amount of money. But if you don't have stuff in writing about what expectations are, and what's uh, supposed to be done, or if something happens, acts of God, you know, all kinds of stuff like that come into play, um, that we've had to actually go back to our contract and like, this is what our contract said, this is what we all agreed on, um, so that way we're all protected and, you know, if something were to go to court, like we have, you know, signatures saying like, this is what's important for the business side of stuff. So it's more than just snapping a photo or taking a video or working with clients and things like that. There's a lot of legalities involved with um, with the business. Like you gotta be set up and protect yourself. And I think it's very wise to, to set yourself up as an LLC mm -hmm. so that you're limiting your, mm -hmm. what exposure is there. Right. Obviously you don't want to risk personal things mm -hmm. and uh, yep. over business debts. Right. So by using the right entity, you can somewhat limit that exposure. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of people tend to get, they don't quite understand that if you, as an individual sign mm -hmm. say a guarantee saying I'll be responsible for mm -hmm. the LLC if it doesn't pay its debt right. then you still are picking up part of it mm -hmm. but a large part of of the limited liability risk you're trying to avoid is say you have employees that are mm -hmm. running errands or you have uh, and, and something happens, you don't mm -hmm. want something they do to cause liability to come back on you personally. Right. You want it to be kind of limited to what's there that's, that's very true. In, in the company. Mm -hmm. So one of the things you were mentioning is about contracts. Mm -hmm. I always try to say that is a very good idea and make sure you read all the fine print right. because that's where a lot of things get in there that can affect um, might affect whether you can have a jury trial. Right. Right. A lot of arbitration clauses now in contracts. Mm -hmm. A lot of companies want an arbitration clause in their contract so right. that it limits potential punitive damages or any right. lawsuit damages. Mm -hmm. And What's so, the arbitration clause. What's that between the just standard contract? If you read most of the consumer contracts that are out there now, they'll have uh, clauses that basically say you agree not to have a jury trial that you agree to arbitrate any disputes. And that way, wow. <laughs> you, but it's in, it's, in most of, it's in most of the consumer contracts, and so that's why I say read the fine print. And it's always a good idea mm -hmm. that if you're fixing to sign a, a business contract to have your attorney look at it right. to make sure that there's no clauses in there. Uh, a lot of times people sign credit card contracts and they're agreeing that if there's any dispute, it'll be litigated in South Dakota. Obviously, it's not very easy to go from here to yeah. South Dakota to fight 
And so you always want to read your fine print it it for you. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> to make sure of what, what you're agreeing to. A lot of people, and whenever you say fine print, I always think about when you're re for a Google Gmail or you download a new app on your phone, they all make you click to accept before you can use the app. Mm-hmm. No one reads them. And as a, as a data engineer, <laughs> uh, no, no, I read no, them. There's some that read it. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, okay, so because I'm guilty, because I know for a fact, other things that aren't in my industry, I don't read the fine print. I'm thinking, I know like, like for you, for example, you're a lower, that's what you do. You that's read right. the fine print, you go yes. through it. When I read the fine print for some apps that people download, why does this, why does this particular app need access to my photo gallery or my microphone? Mm-hmm. And you go in there and read the fine print. It's very interesting to have a data collect and being a data engineer. My contract, when I work with a client, it's 11 pages long. And yeah, it's, it's long. It's single space, 12, <laughs> single, single space, font size 12, <laughs> Roman numeral times uh, font. And I tell my clients, please read through this because uh, mm-hmm. for my industry with the latest Cambridge Analytica and Facebook just going to DC two months ago and all that other stuff, data is very, very valuable and very important. I have, I have to be very very direct in what I do with the mm-hmm. data that I collect on not just my, my, the client's business, but on the clients that go to their business online. And we don't have to uh, make sure that stuff doesn't end up in someone else's hand or right. bruised. But yeah, that, that fine print, oh, <laughs> some of those, some of those, what, just like your eyes, if we're kissing Googles, what's the longest thing you've ever read that wasn't school related that had to be a lower fine print of a contract? What's, oh, I don't know, 50 plus pages, <laughs> it's <laughs> lower depending <laughs> on the dynamic. There's, there's a lot of those kind of contracts out there, you know. Commercial leases are very detailed mm-hmm. generally, and so you know there's a lot of, lot of contractual matters that you, you know you want to you want to read them and look at the fine print and make sure that it's fair or, or or at least understand what you're signing. You know it's okay if you agree to something, but it's better to understand what you're agreeing to mm-hmm. than just sign it blindly and not know until it's too late. Um, or like what we like to like refer to people like if. If you don't understand that kind of stuff, like that's where lawyers definitely come in handy because, like you said, you don't want to blindly sign something off, but like you can have someone help you understand what's happening. Like I'm terrible with like legalities, finances, and stuff like that. That's not my strengths. But then I rely on other people that do, um, so that way I can still operate well without actually having to be an expert in that field. <laughs> so it's like I know photography, I know videography, and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes down to other stuff, like. I'm not afraid to refer out and try to find someone else that is an expert in that field to try to do that. So sometimes it takes an investment to consult a lawyer, but in the long run, it's going to be well worth the investment to do that kind of stuff. Um, I'll mention one other thing to y'all while we're here talking. A lot of the reasons we have people set up legal entities and do planning is so that they can treat their business but most everybody has a vi- they have some kind of vision, but the idea is do you see how do you see your business taking you where you want to go? Right. Do you want your business to ha- you you want to be able to to set up a retirement account or mm-hmm. pay for fringe benefits, uh, right. health insurance and those things? And what's the best way to do it? And a lot of times through the the entities we set up, mm-hmm. uh, we bring the the client in with their, maybe with their insurance people to kind of go over those things mm-hmm. or their investment broker to set up investment plans uh, so mm-hmm. that they get the most out of the tax laws and ac- help accumulate as much as they can. Right. So a large part of what we do is helping people with financial law and also with accounting uh, mm-hmm. to help them utilize the tax laws and the other laws to, to, to make their small business help them get where they want to go. That's good. That's, I that's think a, we covered a lot of bases with this talk. I think uh, we have plenty <laughs> more we can always cover. Right. Um, I know, so last year you did a talk on this as well, which is up on your Facebook page, correct? No, that's for the... We did a, I did, I did a little uh, talk um, to the Small Business Council mm-hmm. uh, on this out at Troy, uh, at Troy's campus. It was little over a year ago, I think, maybe a year and a half. And we talked to them over a number of these items and uh, I believe that's possibly... Uh, it's up online still. It's online still, I think, yes. Um, 
Definitely. Uh, if you guys have any questions or concerns, Cam, uh, let people know where they can find you. Um, my office is at 326 North Oak Street here in Dothan on the legal. And I also can be reached at 572 Westgate Parkway, which is the accounting firm's location. So either place I can be reached. Do you have a website? Uh, you can get me at metcalfcpa.com or sbmetcalf at sb.com. Awesome. All right. Yeah, we appreciate you having this uh, business law to kind of talk with us. Uh, and uh, we'll probably stop in another time and get some more discussion going with some different business tips. Like, that's what we're trying to do with, uh, like, particularly like this show is to try to just every week have these different business nuggets that'll help small businesses out, even if you're a large business, uh, just to help everybody have a good solid foundation or at least get back on track in some way. Um, so just uh, stay tuned to the show. Um, again, hashtag Dothan Biz Talk. Um, you can find the show on either my uh, Evergreen Creative Company's Facebook page or Pathfinder Digital Marketing's page. We kind of flip flop between the two different ones and we'll keep everybody updated on the status of the podcast kind of stuff so we can have it all in one location. It's coming. It just, it takes a little bit of work to it's get work there. It's a work in progress. <laughs> yeah. Guys, thanks for having me. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Ken, and thank you for having it, us. Yeah. Any, anytime y'all want to discuss this, just give me a call. Yeah, sounds good.